Welcome everyone to another observability clinic. It's part of our Dynatrace community practices, tips and tricks. It's episode seven already. Dynatrace API is made easy via Postman and Python. And I have Patrick Hoffman with me. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Hi, Andy. I'm great. And you? Very good. Thank you so much for doing this. Patrick, for those people that don't know you, uh, can you quickly introduce yourself? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, sure. Um, I work at 360 Performance. We are a Dynatrace partner in the DACH region, and we help our customer basically over the whole lifecycle with APM and Dynatrace. So evaluating it, then integrating it, setting it up, and then also all extensions around it, um, integrating it deeper into the lifecycle of your applications, for example. That's pretty cool. So folks, for all of you that want to follow up with Patrick, maybe later on, to get some more uh, of his expertise, feel free, I guess, to reach out to him on the community. You have his name, uh, also 360 Performance, a great company and partner of Dynatrace to reach out to. Now, however, Patrick, let's get into the meat. Can you tell us what you have prepared for us? Sure. Um, my topics revolve all around the Dynatrace API. I've prepared two topics. So the first one is how to get an easy, quick start with the Dynatrace API with Postman. Um, how to copy settings between environments or just work inside an environment faster with the Dynatrace APIs. And then the second topic um, goes a bit further and um, shows how you can quickly create scripts in Python with a library that the Dynatrace open source team provides to do more complex topics that maybe aren't just um, possible with a simple API explorer. Cool. That sounds good. And I love automation. Um, so let's uh, let's get started. Sure, let's jump right into the first topic and have a look at the easy API access with Postman. Um, for those maybe who don't know what Postman is, it started as a simple browser plugin. It's now a standalone application that helps you explore APIs and do repetitive tasks a bit easier and more convenient. So you can import multiple collections as they are called in Postman, basically the API endpoints. So in Dynatrace, you would have the environment and the configuration mm -hmm. and also the cluster APIs. And then you can create environments in Postman. So basically for every um, Dynatrace SaaS or managed tenant you have or the cluster management console for the cluster APIs, you can create a different environment. And so you can switch very fast between working with different Dynatrace tenants and also different API endpoints mm -hmm. without the need for multiple tabs, for example, if you use the API Explorer that's built into Dynatrace. So I have only a few slides prepared and then we will jump right into a demo and take a look at it live. Mm -hmm. So basically, we'll first take a look at the setup um, of Postman. It's pretty simple. You can download it and install it. There's also a portable version if you can't install anything. And then there's only two um, configs we need to do. We can import the uh, Dynatrace um, API endpoints. I have them actually already finished as Postman collections on a GitHub repository. So you can just download them and import them. No need to create them yourself. And then we need to, of course, define our environments um, so that the postman um, knows where it needs to communicate to. So Patrick, uh, just a heads up. That means um, if people are watching this and they want to get the link to that repository, they will find it in the description of the of the blog post or of the, the summary. Yeah, right. We can put a link to the collection or description. You will also find it in the community. If you do a quick search for postman there, it will also come up as a community post. Awesome. Thank you. Great, then let's jump right into the demo. Mm -hmm. So I have Postman here. Basically you can sign in if you want, then it will also back up all your collections. I've signed out now of Postman. So that's, that's basically what you will see if you do a fresh install of Postman. At the left, we then have our collections and our environments. So basically the first thing we need to do is import the collections and they are based on um, the API specs that Dynatrace provides. So Maybe if you don't know, if you go to the um, API Explorer in Dynatrace, you will find them in a context menu for all the endpoints. And there you can also download the entire spec that API is based on. And that basically Postman can import that directly. Or if you want to save some work, you can go to GitHub um, with the link we will provide. And there you find the collections I already provide. There's also again, the documentation on how to set it all up but that's just a few convenience features already in there to work with the environments. Mm -hmm. So the tokens are replaced, for example, and the URLs are replaced. So also for my understanding, Patrick, um, and also for the, the, the listeners, that means you've done some convenience work here 
like I guess the structure of the APIs and as you said, some some templatizing of parameters already. So that just saves uh, saves time for the community. Yeah, right. It's it basically parameters for the environment URLs and the tokens. We will see that when we set it up now. Cool. Thank you. Sure. We can jump to releases here. Um, I'll update them quite regularly. Um, there's my, sometimes there's a bit of time between a new Dynatrace version and when I update. But at the last point, we can also take a look at how to create those collections yourself. I provided a script for that as well. So if you need an update urgently, it's pretty simple to do that as well. Mm -hmm. And I also so, see here um, that you do not only have the configuration and the environment API, but you also have the cluster API as well. Yeah, so if you're a managed customer and you want to automate some user creation, for example, there are endpoints for that as well here. Mm -hmm. So you can download, if you just need a few of them, you can download them directly here. So for example, if you want the environment API, you can just download those JSON files. Let's take the configuration API as well. And then... Postman, there's a simple import button here at the top that allows you to import those JSON files directly. You can also do multiple at once. So we take the environment and the JSON and the environment and the config API we just downloaded and just import that. It's usually pretty fast. So now we have all the API endpoints. It's also sorted into folders. So all the different API endpoints you see in the um, open API browser and the UI, you have a different folder for RAM, for Synthetic here as well, and then it lists all the endpoints. So that is the first part. The second part, of course, we now need to tell Postman on what is our environment, our Dynatrace tenant, and we can do that here via environments. We can create a new environment, give it a name. So I have two of my um, SaaS tenants here that we can use for this example. Basically, you need a token with all the relevant scopes for the endpoints you are using, and then you need the, um, the URL part, so the domain of the SaaS tenant. In case it is managed, you also need to include the environment ID that is at the end so it knows which environment on that cluster. So in this environment, we can set multiple variables that Postman then will use. So we need to set dt underscore host. That's also the names are in the GitHub repository and set that to our host. And then we need dt underscore token and set that to our token. I already have prepared one in my password manager. Um, those tokens will also expire. So if you see them on screen, no need to test them. They will expire by the end of the day. It's always good to mention for our security aware watchers. <laughs> yeah. So that would be my first environment. I can give it a name here. So I know that's my ORP development tenant, for example, and hit save. And then if I want to create another environment, there's the new button here at the top. And we want to create another environment and basically do the same steps again. We have DT host. Let's take our second environment here. And then also copy the token for that one and set that to DT token and it's safe. So now if we close the tabs here and go back to the collections, we can use any endpoint. So if we just want to get the cluster version, for example, now I have at the top here, the environment selector where I can select one of the environments. Oh, we didn't change the name for the second one. Maybe let's do that really fast. Oh, we also should hit save probably and close it up. And now we can select the environments mm -hmm. here at the top. If you open a request, you can send it. It will always go to the selected environment and you can easily switch between them. Okay. So there are a few use cases where this can be really helpful if you want to copy, uh, for example, configuration between different environments. If you have a um, management zone in one environment and you want to copy it to another environment, you can do that pretty fast. If you go to the config API and search for the management zone endpoint, First, we can get a list, so it will also group that endpoints for a bit better visibility. That is the list endpoint, the first one that will now give us um, 
all the management zones in that environment. We get all the IDs. We can copy as the ID of the management zone we want to multiply or copy to another environment. And then it always groups those specific endpoints now. So where we need an ID, if we want to get, delete, or update a management zone under this separate ID folder here. So now we have the endpoint to get information about our specific management zones. Postman then also creates parameters for all the IDs. So for example, the management ID from the URL, it creates a variable for that. And we can just set it here, the variable field with the ID we copied. And then we get the information about that management zone. It also makes a nice output in JSON directly formatted. Mm -hmm. And now if we want to create that in a different environment, we can just copy the entire body and then use the post request. There are a few there. So we have a validate option if we just want to check if what we created is actually valid. But if we want to create it directly, we can just use the post endpoint. For the body, there's always an example. We can just replace that with our URL, that uh, was our body we copied. If we want to create it, we always need to remove a few things. So of course the ID will be in there. If we want to create a new entity based on that management zone, um, we can just remove the ID and all the metadata that is there that is basically useful if you want to save it, you know, which cluster version does it come from. And then of course we need to change to our new environment. So we want to create that management zone as well in our MFK, envi MFK environment. Hit send and we should get back the ID. And if we jump to that environment, it wasn't there before, so we only had management zones for our colleagues, for my colleagues, <laughs> and now we should have mine as well. So it's pretty fast to copy and copy it between environments. Mm -hmm. But it also can make it a lot easier if you want to, for example, change change some rules that are pretty repetitive. So in that management zone, for example, um, I have it's for the production environment. So every rule is based on a tag that is called stage and has production in there. If I now want the same management zone for dev, for staging, and for different um, for different um, environments, it's easy to just you can find and replace in that window. So I can say take all the occurrence of of prod and replace them with dev. Mm -hmm. So now all the tags have been updated to dev. I can maybe change the name. That is now my dev management zone. And post it again. And now we have the same management zone, updated the tags for dev. And that saved me basically editing maybe multiple or in big environments with big management zones. It can save you editing hundreds of rules by hand, just changing out a few tags. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful, and and uh, I think what I like about this is uh, the easy, the easiness of of tools. Right? I mean, Postman makes it very easy for me to explore an API, to call it, to parameterize it. Um, your particular use case is interesting of kind of migrating configuration from one environment to another. Now, in general, and Patrick, I know this doesn't fit the topic today, but you, because you, you you kind of focused on this use case of configuration management, I typically say for configuration management, use tools like Terraform or maybe Monaco, where we have already, especially for that use case, providing we're providing a capability of uh, monitoring configuration as code, right? Oh. But I yeah, sure. That's what we recommend our customers as well, right? Yeah. If you, for actually management, use a configuration management tool like Monaco's or other out there. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just do some quick tests, basically, yeah. and you just want to figure something out, it can can speed things up a lot. Yeah. I also, what I like about this, um, I typically give recommendations on people are asking, so how can I get a list of hosts? How can I get a list of services? Uh, is, this, is this easy through the API? And then this is perfect, right? Because you can... Just query like you've shown, query the yeah. management zones. You can just query any type of or monitor configuration, yeah, whatever it is. So you can query any any entity easily. Yeah, yeah. That's actually another good um, good point where you can use it. For example, the metrics API. If you have certain queries that you use in different environments, mm -hmm. all those those tabs here, you can save them and give them a new name. So if you have a certain query, metric query you do in many environments, you can just enter the parameters, save it as that name, and then easily execute it in 
in different environments without having to copy that metric query again every time. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And um, I know we have a lot of users that try to kind of automate diamond trace into their CI CD process where let's say uh, as part of the deployment, they want to send an event to diamond trace using the events API V2. Uh, I think that's obviously you have the events API there as well as a um, as a collection. Now does Postman, and I know there's more tools out there as well, but Postman is a really great tool. But does Postman also provide, um, let's say, code snippets on how you would call that particular request using? I don't know, yeah. curl or something like this. That's another a nice point. You can basically export every request. Um, um, no, it's not save as. Oh, I need to find it. I know it's there. You can export every request as curl or different, um, um, different, yeah, different tools that will give mm -hmm. you a. I think it downloads it directly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll have to check it up. Maybe we can put it in the community. We can put it in my community post. So there is the option to get a curl from it or. On yeah. different tools, PowerShell download basically. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Because that's also what I like a lot about like the Swagger UI, the web UI. When you when you play around with it, it's not as as powerful as this here, right? And it's constrained to yeah. one environment. But if you then automatically say, "Hey, I've tested this out, and now I want to get the code snippet that I can put into my automation scripts," but that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you work with multiple environments with many tenants, then it makes it a lot easier because you set it up once, you don't have to copy your tokens again. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. uh, one more Postman question, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm fascinated about. I have I also had it have it on my, uh, my desktop. I don't use it as often as you probably, but you mentioned the tabs on the top, which are really convenient. You can have multiple tabs open. Yeah. Um, is it? Can you also store kind of the tab collection as a collection? Um, it will, so if you log in, it will memorize them and it will keep them open, but I don't think you can save them directly. Okay. okay. Cause they would also be very convenient. Maybe yeah. it's a good feedback to the Postman team. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Hey, but yeah, this is cool. This is, uh, especially sure. you, you did all the hard work in, in making this even more convenient. Yeah, that's maybe a good good point. <laughs> All the hard work. Am um, I, of course, I'm also a bit lazy and like automation. So I actually wrote a, a script that does all the hard work now. So if you are in a hurry and need a new API version that's not available yet in my in my collections, basically most of my customers are managed. So I'm always a bit behind with the versions once they update to the latest managed version. Mm -hmm. But if we take another look at the repository, um, and it's basically really simple. I have an open API spec folder. You can copy those specs I just showed right in there. And then there's just a simple convert script. You execute that and it will generate the spec files. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's just some, it uses the postman also provides a CLI to do that conver um, conversion. So you don't need the GUI. And then it does some find and replace with SED to set those variables we need. Cool. And that means you just do this on a regular basis and then you check in the latest version in yeah. your Git repository. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need it also. You can always use an older version, right? Only if for that API endpoint you use something significant change, then of course you need to update. But mainly you don't need to update to every new version of the collection just if something doesn't work or you're missing a parameter that you know is there in the new Dynatrix API, then you can mm -hmm. update the collections. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, great. I think that, that covers the... Postman um, part of the presentation, unless you can think of any other questions. No, I think I, I already asked all of my questions. I just want to say, folks, if you're watching this, we will put the links to the GitHub repository here and also, I guess, to Postman in general uh, yeah. to the description of this video. No, this is awesome. And I, I've interrupted you many times earlier. I'm, I'm good with, with questions now. On this <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, it's always good to get the questions out right yeah. away. Yeah. Okay, then let's continue and jump to the second topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the second part is now, um, if you want to go a step further and you maybe want to do some configuration changes um, or you want to do um, to get some metrics on a regular basis from multiple environments at once where it would be still even with Postman a lot of clicks to do, then there's an easy way to, to script that via Python. So the, the Dynatrace open source team provides a Python library that makes it really easy to work with the Dynatrace API. It doesn't have 100% coverage yet, so you need to check um, if the endpoint you need is available there. 
that's all listed in their GitHub repository. Of course, it's open source. So if you're missing an endpoint and you are fit with Python, you can just add that as well. But it has nice type pins, so it's very easy to, to work with. Um, um, you don't need to do the request handling for the API. The library does that all for you. So if Postman is not enough, that's a good way to get started um, without too much overhead to write a short script, for example. So we can also jump in a demo there right away. Basically, I have prepared two demos with examples um, that I run into frequently where a, a short script is just really helpful. The first example is if you want to a more detailed overview over your host unit consumption. So of course, with SaaS or Managed, you can get it in your account overview. There are also metrics for it. But a frequent use case I ran into is the customer wanted the host unit consumption per host group because they need to build it to different departments, for example. And you can't get the metric split by that. So you can't get that out right away easily from the Dynatrace metric API. Mm -hmm. But of course, the information is available. In the Entity API, you can get all the hosts. They have their consuming host units currently um, as, a, as a field, and you can just get that from the API. But of course, if you have multiple environments, um, if you have multiple um, tenants where you want to do that, um, yeah, it can get quite um, cumbersome to add all those hosts up together if you have hundreds of hosts, mm -hmm. um, if you do that via Postman, for example. So here's an example script. It's actually pretty easy. And maybe we can start quickly show the, um, the repository. Mm. We will also put that in the description. So that's the API client for Python from Dynatrace. Um, it's a simple Python library, so you can just install it via the Python package manager. And then they also list some examples on how to use it directly on the page. But if you want to use it, all you need to do is install it with pip, and it should be already installed here for me. And then you can import that library. I also imported a plotting library, so we can create a simple graph for the host unit consumption, for example. And then you can simply set up the client by giving it, again, the same data we give it into Postman. We give it the URL we need to connect to from our tenant, and then a token. Again, yes. same tokens as in Postman, and <laughs> they will yeah. be invalid later. Yeah, just a reminder, folks, if you're watching this and if you are security aware, then be reminded that these tokens are no longer valid as you're watching yeah. this video. So if we want to now do something with, or maybe I created another method here, just to create a pie chart so we don't have to type all of that up. We give it a name, our host unit consumptions, and the names, and then we'll just spit out a chart. Mm -hmm. So if we want to do something over multiple environments, we can just stick those clients we created, one for each environment, into a list. Then we have a list for our host units the hosts consume and the names of those host groups. And then basically we can, for example, iterate over the environment. And for every environment now, we get a list of the hosts. So for that, we just use those um, the, the object we created. So let's go to the first environment, or we can say actually end here because we want the one that we selected. And then the library will just give you all the endpoints that are available. So if you want to get active gates, if you want to get configurations, all the endpoints they have, you have them right in the auto completion. So you don't even need to look up that much documentation. It's just right there. So if we want to get information about the hosts, there's the environment v1 endpoint for Smartscape hosts. And then we can just get a list of all the hosts. And then we want to get the host group of that host. And we want for every host, we want to get the host units that it's actually consuming, right? So we can iterate over the hosts again. And then we can simply check if we already have seen that host group, then we can add the value. If not, we need to create a new entry. Um, so also for every entity, if we say we want now check the host, it will list all the fields right away. So it's really, really nice to work with. So we can check for the host group. And that again has different fields. It has its ID. If we need that to compare, for example, we can just use the name here. And if that already is in our host groups, then we can simply um, add the value. So in our 
host consumption list. We search for that specific host group. So we get the index of that group. To check if it's already in there. And then we can just add the host units that our current host is consuming. So that's another field of that host, the currently consumed host units. And if it isn't in there yet, then we just append a host group name to our host groups. So we have it, host.host group the name, mm -hmm. and of course also append the host units to the high H host unit consumption. Mm -hmm. Host dot consumed host units. And that will iterate over all the hosts, save the host units for us by group. And now we can just, we are finished, use our helper method we made here to generate a pie chart. And give it our host unit consumptions we created. And as a label, all the host groups we have saved. That was nice live coding. So basically iterating through two lists and then creating two additional lists, one with just the names and the other one with the with an in with a number like the consumed host units and the index in that list is the name is the index of the other group. Perfect. Yeah. And then we'll see it's a demo, so let's see if it works the first time. Yeah. Oh, whew. Actually looks good. And wow. then we have a simple graph. That environment we have seen, right? Um, oh, my colleagues have properly labeled their host groups. I probably was too lazy. So the last <laughs> slice is my host unit without a host group. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's pretty easy, right? You can can work with the API um, if you check the endpoints without basically handling any requests, knowing all the fields. It will just auto-complete it for you. That's very cool. I, do, I was not aware uh, of the library, I guess I remember years ago. I built a Python-based library, but I called it the DT API, I think, which had a couple of, of, of helper functions to get stuff out of the address and configure things. But yeah. this is really nice now. Like it's a Python library. Wow. I, yeah, it's really great. And I actually also um, run into it recently in actually a part of our second example now um, in a plugin. So just a plugin that is also an open source plugin. Um, the Dynatrace provided that used that library to create external synthetic tests and I needed to modify something that plugin, and that's where I found it and realized it was also on GitHub. So yeah, it was a really good find. Perfect. So yeah, the second example is a, a quick configuration change that was often helpful at customers that maybe don't have the size or that don't are that, um, so far yet that they have a config as code approach, but you quickly need to multiply configuration that just takes a lot of time if you do it manually. So. What we often use there, if you jump to one of our demo environments. Um, so Dynatrace is great with synthetic monitoring for web-based applications, right? You can do browser monitors, HTTP checks. But what we often also had to do was um, create synthetic checks for, for example, network devices or for certain other devices that are just aren't HTTP based. And there are some great open source plugins um, out there to do port checks or mm -hmm. ping checks. But if you, of course, have then a list of, let's say, 2,000 network devices where you want to do a port check, nobody wants to make all that configuration here manually, right? It's quite a few fields. You have to give it the host, the port, the frequency, and then how to connect to the Dynatrace environment if you have to enter that 2,000 times, even with Postman that, yeah, nobody wants to do that. And that can also be really easily automated with that. Mm -hmm. So if we jump back to the second example, basically I've just created an example list of, of servers here. Um, those are all my 3D printers basically with the IP address, <laughs> a port, and then the frequency as a simple CSV. So if you get a server list with all the switches you need to ping and have it as a CSV, you can easily read that in Python and multiply that to the configuration. So I basically prepared the same as before. We have imported the client, um, a library to managing the CSV part. We create our client for the environment with the URL and the token. 
And then every extension endpoint needs a few properties. Um, we have seen that in the GUI, if you need to know the fields, you can get them from the plugin JSON. So the plugin zip you deploy to your hosts um, and you upload in Dynatrace. If you take a look at the plugin JSON in there, it will list the names for all those properties you see in the GUI. Mm -hmm. So you can get them directly from there. So I just set them here. Um, I set the URL, the frequency, and just as a few fields that will be the same for every endpoint we create, right? So that we need don't need to set that every time. And then I also had to do a small workaround. I'm not sure if I didn't figure it out correctly or if there's a bug in there. The other thing you have to configure for the endpoint for every extension is the active gate where the extension should run on. And if I created that directly in the client, it always errored out. So the workaround I did was just get one of those existing endpoints that's already there and copy the instance of that active gate. That seemed to work fine. So after that, we can just read the CSV file. We will skip the first row because it's the header. Mm -hmm. And from there again, for all the entries we have in that um, CSV file, we can just um, iterate over the list um, we have there. And then from our property um, template for our properties we already have, we can then replace the values we load for the server, right? So um, what we need to set is the target host, we need to replace the IP every time. And let's do a quick check in our oh, in our CSV file. The IP is the second entry of the list. So as we always start at zero, it would be the number one field. Mm -hmm. Then we need to do the same as well for, for the port, I guess. The port mm -hmm. right? And the part was the third, so the second part. Mm -hmm. And okay. then if we want, we can also set a frequency. We had that in here if we don't want to use the default. Um, so we can also use the frequency here. Cool. And that was the last part. And then we can use our... Um, Client again. In this case, before we post it, we need to create that plugin instance. Um, so we have our client, and that has then the, that is an extension 1.0. You could also create 2.0 extensions. And that has create instance to get that instance of the plugin. And then, especially if you have a lot of fields, also the type hints are nice here again, so you know what you actually need to provide to it. So we need to give it the ID of the extension. That again, we can simply get from the plugin JSON of the plugin, um, the name of the extension there that will be used as the ID. So in that case, it's third party port. Then we need to provide our properties that we've overwritten. So with all the values, we can tell if you want it enabled or not. Um, I'll just set that to false. So I don't start pinging wildly in my network now. Hmm. And then we need to give it the active gate it should run on. That's the one we saved above here and copied from the other test. Well, that formats a little bit better. Those are basically all the options we need. There's some other um, options you could provide, um, but that always depends on the plugin, right? If it's a one agent plugin, for example, you might need to give it the host ID, mm -hmm. but you have all the information right there. And then we can use another endpoint from the client to now push that extension. So it also has a post instance that posts one instance for that plugin. And we just give it our plugin instance we just created. So with that, it will read every server entry in our list, replace the values, and then post that instance to our cluster. So right now, there should be only the one example instance that I created. And let's see if we are as lucky here and it runs on the first time. I need to go to the correct folder. 
and let it run as well. Almost. Ah, not as lucky this time. Path endpoint must not be now. Oh. Maybe we messed up the parameters. The first is the extension ID that should be fine, followed by the properties. And then we post the instance. Most we have the active gate in there. Now that looks endpoint. The constraint. Uh, do you have access right for it? It should be four hundred. No, four hundred is good. Must not be now. Endpoint name. Yeah, Willie really doesn't find a path with it. Doesn't look something for configuration, but the extensions post instance should be the correct one. Because we don't define a path manually, right? Mm -hmm. Um Okay, let me just check something. Of course, I tested and prepared that beforehand. So let's just take a look at my backup if I actually did something wrong there and run it from there. It's always good to have a backup plan. Yeah, uh, especially with live demos. I was already surprised that the first one worked so well. <laughs> Normally, there's always something going wrong, right? Um, Yeah, the that one works there. as expected. Uh, so I'll have to check that out and see what we actually yeah. did wrong yeah. there so we can add that to the post as well. Yeah. Um, but I think the concept is clear, right? It's very yeah. easy to, um, yeah, so it's a menial work where you would have to enter thousands of hosts. Maybe you don't want to or can't set up your entire config management yet. Then it's mm -hmm. really easy to just do a simple script here without Perfect. needing to know the API is just multiplied it a lot. Awesome. Do you wanna do you wanna show us that file, or do you wanna just upload it later on to the Git repository? Um, what do you wanna do? Sure, I can show it right. Or we can show it. Maybe we spot a difference. If not, I'll uh, um the examples I created. I'll also list them on the GitHub page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the GitHub page, so you can check them out there. Mm -hmm. So that is the working one, mm -hmm. and that should be from here. I think the endpoint, that's what was really missing, the endpoint name. You had to set the endpoint name to the server. Ah, that's right. The that's what we didn't missing. provide. That's yeah. basically in the UI. Um, it has a name here. Um, mm -hmm. It isn't used for anything. Ah. It's just to, to show the name, and we didn't set that. So we should set that, of course, to the server name. So yeah. it has a name for the endpoint. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I really heads off for doing two live coding sessions like this. It's a really... Really brave and really great, <laughs> yeah. great to see. But uh, yeah, um, I have, as always happens uh, <laughs> with a live demo, but I think for that topic, it's just the best. It's, it's showing perfect. it at slide, just doesn't get it across. Yeah. 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 Any any other questions or ideas you have? Uh, I would love to. Uh, can you quickly open up the Dynatrix OSS API client Python? So this library here, folks is i you know it's great thanks for for highlighting it it's a, i think it's a great way for many of uh of you admins that are more familiar with python and creating your automation scripts and so instead of i guess hand coding all of the rest calls you just have a nice library that encapsulates the Dynatrix api um i will make sure to also give credits then and when we post this to the the folks that create and maintain that library um, to see who that is on the Dynatrace side, who are the main contributors to that. Yeah. Oh, Rado, Stefan, of course. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, some some well-known names. I can already see it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's great. No, other than that, I think it's uh, again blown away with with your with your boldness of doing live demos <laughs> here and live coding. Thank you for that. Also, thanks for putting all of this out on GitHub, all of the examples. And I don't have any more questions. It's really okay. Great then. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, definitely. And I want to just say, um, folks, if you let me just uh, if you quickly stop your recording, I'll uh, not stop a recording. If you click uh, stop your um, sharing, sharing sure. yeah. Um, I want to say, you know, be be as brave as Patrick, and even if you're only half brave as him, 
Just uh, if you have any tips and tricks, I think this is a great opportunity to share them with the Dynatrace community and uh, just encourage everyone to follow your lead, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with this. Thank bye. you. Have bye. a nice day. Bye.